I would disagree with a little bit of what he's saying here. And I think, I, yeah, I think my eyes rolled. <laughs> okay, well, that's rude. Why are you pointing me out? <laughs> this is going to read some way to Catholics. It's going to read another way to Protestants, and it might read another way to the general public. I am not just saying this to be nice to you. True. Well, this is weird, but I got to get used to it. It was like, just, just <laughs> relax. Everyone, everyone. I was gonna so throughout the years that I've been doing chosen content, that's about over three and a half years now. Um, there have been some haters, <laughs> not just in my comment sections, not just in my live chats, but around the chosen in general, right? From everything from, hey, why aren't all these actors Christian to what? They're messing up the Bible. Why would they do that in the show? Of course, there are some nitpicks that I even have about the show and say that maybe they could have done it a different way, right? <laughs> even me who loves the show, I think it's the best piece of Christian media in my lifetime still. There are things that I even don't like. So let's talk about the difference between hating the show and criticism, but let's look at this through the lens of Jonathan Rumi, who actually has a conversation with another YouTube channel called Pints with Aquinas. Uh, this is a Catholic YouTube channel that he went on recently to have some discussion about the show and kind of his general life and what's going on. So let's check out this specific section and talk about uh, Jonathan Rumi's outlook on the criticism for the chosen and the chosen haters. So let's jump into this. Here we go is doing something and we have a TV in our basement and I think one of the kids came up and said, we're watching this new show about Jesus. Like it's a new series or something. And you're like, and oh, I think, no. I, yeah, I think my eyes rolled. <laughs> yeah, my eyes rolled because we all know the experience well, of watching have. a religious movie and yeah. you're like, oh dear. I am not just saying this to be nice to Truly you. Truly I say to thee. Totally. That was my first experience as well. When I first heard about The Chosen from a pastor of mine, uh, a pastor I was working with during the time, it was it was 2020, right in the beginning of COVID lockdowns and all that kind of stuff. And I remember when he told me about the show, for me, I was like, okay, I'm not watching the show. <laughs> I was like not even ready to give it one single chance. But Vanessa forced us to watch the show. And, and so we watched uh, you know the first few episodes that night and we thought it was really, really good. So uh, yeah, at first, my first reaction was definitely like, yeah, uh, no, definitely not. Totally, yeah. Um, not just saying this to be nice to you, but when you walked on set as Jesus, it just made sense. Mm. It wasn't jarring. It wasn't like, well, this is weird, but I got to get used to it. It was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. And it's yeah. got way more, it's, it's way more than just your hair and beard, clearly, yeah. you know? So, He's also, I mean, that well first, done. thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that first scene is in a bar. Okay. And Jesus walks into a bar where yeah, Mary, Mary Magdalene, Magdalene is drowning her sorrows and commit, you know, on the verge of committing suicide in our story you know it's, yeah. we take some creative license it's yeah. based on the gospels it's not meant to replace the gospels Calm down, it's not just, let's just <laughs> relax everyone, everyone i was gonna ask okay. you about this because there's a lot we live in such a divisive time yeah everything is being pulled apart oh yeah you know like the democratic party the republican party the conservatives <laughs> in america the catholic church the jewish uh -huh. community like it feels like everything's being sifted as wheat yeah <laughs> and it's really like you're just like hey what if we just did this like show where we yeah. kind of did a kind of a lexio divina on the mm -hmm. gospels yeah so obviously jonathan's perspective at least from what he's sharing right here at the beginning is everybody calm down right stop worrying so much i think there are a couple of different sides to this and of course we'll get into this as we get further on to this interview but there's the side of actual critique, which I think is valid. There are things that for sure in The Chosen, maybe you don't agree with, and that's completely fine, right? Then there's the other side of things where people just take it way too far. They say that The Chosen is something that it's not, and it becomes something that is way too much for what this show actually is trying to portray. Uh, and so let's get more into this interview, but there's definitely more than one side to this when it comes to criticism of The Chosen and then the hater side of The Chosen. Uh, I think there's two signs, sides to this coin for sure. Well, actually, <laughs> like there's a lot of that. Yeah. Okay, well, that's rude. Why are you pointing me out? <laughs> I'm, the def I'm definitely the well actually guy. Uh, absolutely for the chosen, but I think it's important because there are some things that are historically inaccurate in the show that help us to have a, a better idea if we understand the historical uh, significance of those things. Right. Uh, and so I think the, 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 well, actually from my point of view is not, well, actually the chosen sucks because of this. It's well, actually the chosen would be even more beneficial if you understood this, right. Which is my, my kind of stance that I take there. Of course, that's not to say there can't be legitimate criticisms of artwork. Obviously, that's that we're not saying that, but it's how have you dealt with that? How yeah. has Dallas dealt with that? He's uh, he's pretty remarkable in that there's not much that that sticks with him. He just kind of 
you know, bounces off of him and he's like, yeah, whatever. You know, like he, he already knows what it's going to be, what the criticisms will be before we even shoot the scene, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's definitely not true. The second part of that. I think the first part is generally true. I think there are some times when Dallas does get riled up. However, there are most of the time Dallas really, really handles it well. The second part of that I don't think is necessarily true at all. I think Dallas has some inkling of what might be controversial versus not. However, there have been many, many times, basically once every single season, where there's been something that has been majorly controversial that Dallas did not predict right so for example whenever jesus was preparing his message in season two episode five that was a huge moment where everybody started like just bashing on the chosen and a lot of people left uh for example uh season three episode three whenever jesus says that he is the law of moses this is another major section where a lot of people had had controversial ideologies there when they were they were diving into this they're just thinking man, this guy is Mormon. It's all crazy. Like, this is so nuts. Like, I can't believe he wrote that, blah, 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 blah. There's been a couple other moments where people have really harped on the show uh, in a controversial way that I don't think that Dallas uh, expected at all. <laughs> um, but it definitely did happen. Hmm. Um, there are times where I'm like, this is going to get a rise out of people. But, you know, I, I, I get it. I'm like, this is, you know, when we've had actually discussions about like, Okay, well, how, how how do we best approach this scene? Because you and I both know that this is going to read one way to some people and another way to another people. Other to decode that, what he's saying is this is going to read some way to Catholics. It's going to read another way to Protestants, and it might read another way to the general public, right? Or even like LDS or something else uh, along those lines, right? So these different people are going to have different ideas of what these sentences mean. I, I I've seen where LDS people in particular have taken certain parts of the chosen and kind of uh, made it their own, uh, kind of changed the, the, the thinking behind the writing of the lines and made it very, very, very Mormon. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, I've, I've obviously the chosen is generally very vague when it comes to certain things. For example, the, the thought of Jesus's brothers and sisters, right? Uh, the, the, the fact that, Dallas for sure believes that Jesus has brothers and sisters and he's written them into the show sort of right. Uh, whereas they're mentioned in the show, but they never appear because then the Catholic base would get very upset. Right. So in the show it's pointed out as very vaguely they're there, but is it their brothers or is it his brothers or is it not his brothers? Are they cousins? It's not completely verified. Right. So in the show it can be a little bit ambiguous in order to, uh, you know, serve the entire, audience that is watching the chosen currently the people in like how do we just keep this continually universally ecumenical mm. where we're not planting a flag right one place or another because that's been for me uh in in, in my observations that's been the, the reason for the success of the show it's because it is so universal it is so uh beloved because of how Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying this video and you want to help us out to create more videos just like this, there's a few things that you could do to help. The best free way is to just watch our videos. If you can watch the rest of this video and then maybe even go watch another video after that, that'll tell YouTube that we're the best channel on the platform and it'll really, really help. If you want to go above and beyond and help us financially to consistently help us make more videos, the best way to do that is through snipesupport.com. You can pledge five, 10 or $25 a month and get a bunch of extra content that doesn't really go anywhere else. For example, our full live streams. The video that you're watching right now is a part of a live stream, but you can get the full live stream without any cuts or edits or anything over on patreon.com or snipesupport.com. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Thank you so much for your support. It, it's not s denominationally specific. It's story specific. It's Jesus specific. It's Jesus centric. It's meant to get you to think about the reality of Jesus's life on earth and what he did that was both human and divine in the course of his life and ministry. And I would disagree with a little bit of what he's saying here. First of all, the, the term universally ecumenical. So if you don't know, ecumenical basically means that it can serve all beliefs or serve all beliefs within a, within a framework, right? So we would say that an ecumenical community could include uh, all different types of denominations of Christianity, for example. However, an ecumenical community would not include um, like a Satanist group, right? 
or in fact, I would probably add in an LDS group, right? This would not be an ecumenical addition. So the, the phrase universally ecumenical, I think is a little bit, not something that I would use. <laughs> I'll, we'll say it that way. It's not something that I would use because ecumenical, it, 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 it immediately implies this framework that is, that is there within, um, within it, right? Uh, you're not going to have an ecumenical group that uh, agrees on everything for sure, but you're going to have an ecumenical group that agrees on the core beliefs of everything within that framework. For example, Jesus is fully man and fully God and has been from the very beginning until the end, right? Um, that is one thing that an ecumenical group would agree on in that. Um, universally ecumenical can never be the case. And so I think the chosen is less, uh, uh, less, the chosen definitely lean, definitely leans towards a Protestant point of view. Uh, however, I would say generally it can be applied for Catholics and Protestants. They would agree on 99% of the show, if that makes sense. Um, within this, although I think obviously the show is great, no matter what, even if you're not looking at it from a religious point of view, let me back this up a little bit. Cause there's another point I wanted to make for the second part. There. And what he did that was both human and divine in the course of his life and ministry. And, get people talking. And hopefully, if you've never met Jesus, if you don't know who Jesus is, if you've never opened the Bible, this is meant to, ga to, to, to gauge your interest and provoke interest. Mm -hmm. in I would say this about the, the second part here. Oh, that's so weird. Why did I do that? <laughs> the second part How? here, I would say, is um, I, I don't think this show is about Jesus. It is obviously about Jesus. Clearly, the, the, the core framework of the show is Jesus and trying to get you to Jesus and understanding Jesus' historical story. However, the main characters of the show are literally the apostles, right? Everything that we see is through the eyes of the apostles, not through the eyes of Jesus, as we don't know what that perspective would look like. And so everything that we see, whether that's Jesus healing somebody or doing a miracle or going to the cross, all of these things are going to be seen through the eyes of his apostles and his followers, not necessarily himself. So I would say that the show is less about Jesus than it is the apostles. Uh, it's not focused entirely. The core of the show is not Jesus, but Jesus through the eyes of his apostles. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm sure some of you are like, what is he talking about? <laughs> but generally, that's what I would say. I would, I, would, I would slightly disagree with that statement there. It, it's not denominationally specific. It's story specific. It's Jesus specific. It's Jesus centric. It's meant to get you to think about the reality of Jesus's life on earth and what he did that was both human and divine in the course of his life and ministry and get people talking. And hopefully, if you've never met Jesus, if you don't know who Jesus is, if you've never opened the Bible, this is meant to, ga to, to, to gauge your interest and provoke interest mm -hmm. in knowing more about these right. people, about this movement. You know, we, we, we describe the show now as a, as, a, as a historical drama because that's what it is. It's a historical drama about these people at this time and this man and our God in this movement. If you don't accept that he's God, that's, that's your journey. Yeah, and I think that's a good uh, representation of what the show is. This is a historical drama that is representative of the story of Jesus through the historical lens of uh, understanding who he was, right? But clearly the show does not just have him as a historical figure and for you to take, uh, take what you believe and kind of judge the show off of that. I would say that for sure the show is leaning towards a religious point of view. It's leaning towards a Protestant point of view generally. Um, and I would say overall, it, it definitely is, is a religious um, uh, framework that the show is built off of, right? Otherwise, you would never show real miracles happening in the show, for example, right? If it was a true historical drama that didn't claim to be on any side, you would imply that miracles are happening, but you would never show how they're done or when they happen, right? Uh, if it was a true historical drama that didn't lean on, on a Protestant point of view or a, a religious point of view, you would have, for example, like when Jesus heals the leper, 
um, you wouldn't show that happening. When Jesus heals the crippled hand, you wouldn't show that happening. You would just imply that it did happen and have people talk about it happening because that way people can come up with their own conclusions of, um, of what is going on, right, uh, overall. And, and instead of saying, no, Jesus did perform this miracle, this thing did happen, right? That would be like a true historical drama without any influence. But that's not necessarily what the show is either. But we're presenting it as this is where what this story is, and if it strikes something beyond just that of a narrative, you know, a television show, glory to God. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's the... That's, the, I think, the end goal for many of us working on the show who are believers, who, who love Jesus and, and see him as more than just a person who you know, roamed the earth for a few years and taught some things and had some maxims that stuck around beyond his mm -hmm. lifetime. No, you know, many of us working on the show accept him as our Lord and Savior and want other people to understand just how profoundly impactful he was to the culture and to the world and why and what might the day-to-day -day look like for him. And so we, we've gone to great depths and pains to, to do the research. What was, you know, first century Judea? Uh, what were the, you know, the, the concerns of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? And what, were, what was Hillel saying about, you know... Which is my favorite part of the, of the whole show. You guys know that. My favorite part of the show is the historical and cultural understanding of what the Jewish people were actually like to really start to understand what is going on here, right? Um, yeah, some of my favorite moments of the show. Um, the Jewish scriptures and how did it relate to Jesus's teachings and how did the Pharisees frame what Jesus was doing compared mm -hmm. to what they already knew and how that it challenged them and what was the controversies and what did it mean to people who followed him? How, what did they lose by following him? What did they gain? So we, we try to ask a lot of questions through the relationships that we explore in the show in ways that hopefully bring people just closer to Jesus. Yeah, sometimes when I've heard people offer criticisms or I don't find it theologically enriching, I think, okay, fine, like you, you need to read Thomas Aquinas' commentary on the Gospel of Matthew. But there are a lot of people who aren't there yet yeah. uh, and need a it's kind a bridge of, too far. For, it's a for bridge many too people. far. And what it seems like what you're doing is like a gentle way yeah. to introduce people to this person of Jesus. I mm -hmm. wonder, I mean, how many people hadn't read the New Testament until they saw your show and went, I'm going to give that another crack. Yep, yeah. I'm going to go buy a Bible yep. from Barnes and & Noble. And so many people. Yeah, my number one um, kind of push for The Chosen is like, okay, how many people before watching The Chosen could have named all 12 apostles? How many? What percentage of people do you think could have done that? I don't think I could have done that before having a visual picture of what all the apostles' names were, Right. And now, obviously, we have Bartholomew versus Nathaniel in the in the Chosen in particular, but everybody else, right? I think that it, it's so easy for every fan of the Chosen to be able to name the twelve apostles. Now, that in and of itself, if the Chosen does nothing else, right? If the Chosen does nothing else, that is a huge win because it brings us closer to understanding the biblical understand of understanding of what's going on, right? Um, just that by itself. That's always my kind of one point that I give to people. It's like. It's such a small thing, and there's so many more things that The Chosen has done even beyond that. But the fact that now the people who are watching The Chosen can have a visual representation of what the 12 apostles are, I've been a Christian all my life. And like I said, I, I went to Bible college. I did all the things, right? I don't think I could have told you all 12 apostles without thinking about it real hard before I watched the show. That's kind of embarrassing, right? But the fact that the show did that is huge. I think it's really, really huge have been they grew up with this image of jesus as this stern taskmaster that you know if you if you're not perfect you may as well go to hell and it's like whoa 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 no no that is the opposite it's the opposite look who we hung out with who do you hang out with prostitutes tax collectors cheats thieves like people that and people don't hang out with people who make them feel ashamed all the time. Yeah. So it's not Why like, well, they? yeah, he did hang out with them, but he was yeah. always like, you're not good enough. You suck. Yeah. Try harder. No one hangs out with people like that. Right. There was an affection for Christ. Yeah. Continue. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and and uh, I, think, I think being able to shatter those myths for people through, through the way we're, we're introducing him in the story and introducing his, his humanity uh, at... And not only Jesus, this, this, this goes far beyond just Jesus, right? 
I think obviously Jonathan thinks of it in these terms because he plays Jesus in the show. And of course, Jesus is the most important character within the show itself uh, in terms of like just being God, <laughs> right? Uh, but it, it, it happens through everybody, right? Through Matthew. Matthew was a horrible person who then was called by Jesus and became something that he wasn't. Peter, right, was a, was a totally different person that came to Jesus and completely changed, right? And not only that, but he still had issues even after he followed Jesus, right, as he continued on. There's a lot of things that happened in there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's so interesting to me to see this, uh, this hate that comes. There are, there are full channels on YouTube that are dedicated to bashing the chosen, if you didn't know. Uh, there are full channels. I've, I've been... Uh, uh, kind of, they've taken my footage from my videos and showed them in their videos as like proof that the chosen is, uh, is evil before, uh, which is so annoying, right? It's so, so annoying, uh, to see all that, but, um, many, many, many channels, all they do is look for the horrible things in the chosen and they make videos on just that thing. Um, very annoying, very annoying. At a pace that has never been explored before. Cause nobody's ever done a long form mm -hmm. telling of his, of Jesus's story of his, just, even just his ministry time. Nobody's done that. And yep. so, in doing so, we, we're recognizing that people are, are appreciating his humanity uh, and, and developing such yeah. an affinity for him that when we get to the crucifixion, uh, they don't know, uh, people are gonna be beside themselves. They don't even have to see the crucifixion. I mean, I'm assuming we'll see the crucifixion, but you almost don't even have to see the crucifixion. Like, I, I'm, I'm friends with um, Russell Brand, and he said to me, he's like, he, he met this guy who is like this hard, hard man, um, you know, uh, been through a lot. And, uh, and he, uh, he had said to him, he's like, he was watching, he's been watching The Chosen. And he's like, uh, he's like, I don't want to see him go to the cross. I like this guy. I like him. I like him a lot. I, I'm afraid to see him go to the cross, you know, and, and, and so when you guys get these big tough guys that are all of a sudden now affected because they've been developing this, this affinity, this. I'm not sure he had to do the accent there. <laughs> He's recounting a story that he heard from Russell Brand. Of course, Russell has an accent. Uh, maybe Russell did the accent, and so that's why he did the accent. <laughs> but he didn't need to do the accent. <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> this genuine affection for Jesus, it's like, whoa, that's, that's what it is. That's, that's what we all need to feel. Mm -hmm. That's what we should all feel about Jesus going to the cross. And, you know, what happens when he first gets slapped? I mean, I think people are going to be like, I know that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. slap him. I, I like him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's That's interesting. It'd be really, I'm really curious how, how people are going to perce perceive it and, and receive it. Uh, even, yep. even what we filmed this season for season five, it was basically, it was Holy Week. So, you know, Jesus. We won't get into that. If you guys want to watch the rest of this, there's a whole uh, interview on Pints with Aquinas. If you want to go check out that channel. Uh, very, very good stuff. I thought the interview was great overall, but uh, this section in particular, I think is so integral to The Chosen and how it works as a, as a, as a show. There are so many haters out there that just like criticize everything. Uh, whenever anybody that's non-Christian is in the show, which there's a bunch of them that work on the show, either in the crew or in the cast or whatever else. There's a lot of them that do not have the same religious beliefs as us, not even close, right? A lot of them have very different beliefs, uh, very, very like, Honestly, tragic beliefs, if we were really to dig into it, uh, a lot of you would have a, a, a real big problem with a lot of the cast and a lot of the crew in the way that they believe politically, in the way that they believe sociologically, in the way that they believe uh, religiously. Uh, they are, there's a lot of them that are not followers of Jesus, right? Uh, and even the ones that are, you'd still disagree with some of their, their ideologies. And so... Um, that's just a piece of it. And, and then of course, there's a lot of other uh, people that are on the Christian side of things that really hate the show because of the biblical aspects of it. They believe that they're treating the Bible as something that is, uh, can be, can be changed uh, or, or something that is uh, to be added onto. And that's not what the chosen is doing. The, the chosen is not scripture. The chosen is not the Bible. It's just a show. Uh, and so at the end of the day, all of my nitpicks are to bring us back to reality. It's to bring us out of the 
the show and into scripture. And so that's what we do here on The Chosen Sleuth. But anyway, let me know what you thought about the interview. Go check it out for yourself on Pints with Aquinas. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.